Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of how you use the Gauss Divergence Theorem. Given the paraboloid z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared above the xy plane together with the unit disk, the unit disk, x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1, form a surface S with outward pointing normal vector. So here's our situation. <clears throat> so we're given, there's the z-axis, there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. We're given this paraboloid. And this paraboloid intersects the xy plane at the unit disk. So there's our paraboloid. And we also adjoin to it the unit disk. We're actually putting in this circle on the bottom over there. And at every point on this surface, we're having an outward pointing normal vector. Like so. So there's our outward pointing normal vector. Let's find the flux. Of the vector field V of x, y, z, which is x squared minus y times z, and then y cubed plus x squared, and then finally, z squared minus x y over s. So there's our vector field. So what we're asked to find is we're asked to find the surface integral of v dot n hat d sigma. And so to do this, we're going to use the Gauss Divergence Theorem. So by the Gauss Divergence Theorem, this will be equal to the triple integral over the interior of the surface S of the divergence of this vector field, dV. So triple integral over the interior of S. What's the divergence of this vector field? It's going to be 2x and then plus 3y squared and then plus 2z and then we have a dv. And so what we'll do now is we'll put this into cylindrical coordinates. So in cylindrical coordinates, what's this region? This region is r theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. Our r goes between 0 and 1. And our z goes between 0 and this surface. So we'll go between 0 and the surface, which is 1 minus r squared, because x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So this surface over here is really z is equal to 1 minus r squared. So we have our surface and cylindrical coordinates. And now we have to replace x with x. So x is going to be 2 times r cosine theta. y is going to be we have a 3, and then r sine theta squared. And then we have a plus 2z, because in cylindrical coordinates, z is just z. Then I have an r dz dr d theta. And now we can make some reductions over here. So the first reduction we're going to make is we're going to say that if we integrate this first term over here, we have a cosine of theta. When we cylindrically integrate that, well, the integral of cosine theta between 0 and 2 pi is 0. So this term is going to 0. We don't need to do any integration over here. And so we have these two integrals to do. So the first integral we're going to do is the one with the 3. So we're going to have a integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1 minus r squared. And then this will be 3 r squared sine squared r cubed. Actually, since we have an r over here, so that's going to be r cubed sine squared theta. 
Then we have a dz, dr, d theta. That's our first integral we're going to have to do. And the second integral we're going to have to do is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus r squared, and then we'll have a 2 z r dz dr d theta. And so now what we'll do is we'll notice that over here, this first integral, we can do one more simplification. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1. And then we do the z integration of this, we're going to have a 3, and then since we'll, there's no z here, this will just integrate to a z from 0 to 1 minus r squared. So this will be 3, 1 minus r squared times r cubed times sine squared theta, dr d theta. And then this integral over here, plus, this will integrate to, two, integrate to z squared, so the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, and then we'll have a r times 1 minus r squared squared, then a dr, and then a d theta. So now we've reduced the problem to doing two double integrals over a rectangle, and we'll leave the rest as an exercise, but this simplifies the process considerably, where we don't have to find the outward pointing normal vector, and we just have two double integrals to do. Thank you very much.